Hi, John Capobianco, and yes, I was wrong, completely wrong about MCP. It's even better, even better than what I thought. And I am the first to admit when I've done something wrong, do something wrong, get something wrong, make a mistake, go down the wrong path. I had been, I'm going to make some drawings and this law makes sense, but I had been doing things statically, which was a lot of code, more code than necessary, a lot of brittle code, a lot of, not static, but I was implementing an MCP server and getting the dynamic container to come up and writing my own mapping to the tools that it offered. That's what I was doing. I was mapping these things statically. Let me show you. Let me show you. Let's let's get into this here today. So first of all, um, I always pay attention to my YouTube comments and to any feedback I get on LinkedIn or, or Twitter or anything. And I saw this here. Um, right here. So if, uh, let's zoom in if we can. But Thank you for making these videos. Um, I noticed the tools you're exposed to servers, normal tools in LangGraph, explicitly list them and provide some sort of definition, right? Which is true, which is what I was doing in this video, this masterclass. I understand that one big advantage of MCP would be dynamic discovery of the tools, which are exposed by the MCP server, right? And even if they change over time or we don't have to, right? So. Is this not supported yet? It wasn't so much that it wasn't supported yet, it's that I was doing it wrong. So again, we're talking about model context protocol. And what's even neater about this is we can go, for example, servers, download the server into our code, and then, um, and by the way, I'm gonna do a git pull into my repo here for selector plus that I'm working on. Uh, and I'm gonna show you this code. And this is all working now. So I'm going to pull that in and delete the branch. And we're going to take a look at that. So you'll see some of these servers that are listed here in my code. And I'll show you how it works. If you do a new search, by the way, MCP is sort of all over the place. Uh, context is the missing link, the emergence of model, context protocol in industrial AI, clear intro, Copilot Studio, what it is and how it works. USB-C of AI data connectivity, good analogy. I'm gonna make a networking analogy. All right, so here's, here's, here's the story. In the world of networking, there's something known as a router on a stick, okay? And we have a switch, and this switch might have two VLANs, you know, a red and a blue, or VLAN uh, 10 and VLAN 20. And because they're VLANs, they can't talk to each other through broadcast, so they use a router. Now what I was doing was sort of putting in the static lines of routing that were required for this traffic to work. All right, but one of the advantages of a router are protocols. Now I can, I'm gonna use OSPF, right? And what the thing is with routing protocols, if we attach another router, and this can go on and on and on, more and more routers, and this has more and more routers, they can exchange routes. So back and forth, one router will tell the other, hey, I know how to get to route VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, you know, 10, 10, Ten ten and ten twenty slash twenty four twenty dot ten slash twenty four right something like that. Hey, I know how to get there, so that way when traffic over here wants to get there, this router will happily send the traffic along. All right, now what does this have to do with MCP? I'm going to make another example using networking things. So I'm a PC in this case, I'm a computer, all right? And I have the need for an IP address, all right? So up here, we can have a DHCP protocol server. 
and we have this Dora four-step discovery. Client does a broadcast to discover the DHCP server, which offers an address back. Right, we we then request that act that, and then we acknowledge that Dora. Now, what does this have to do with MCP, and what the way I was doing it? So remember, we we have this idea. We have a start. We have an assistant. I'll move that over. We have tools, and we have an end. Right now, currently, start, exit, iteratively call tools. This is the assistant. This is the start. This is the end. And these are the tools. Now, we're going to focus in on the tools. Not that much, but we're going to focus in on the tools. So I have some static tools. I have a little toolkit of static tools that are just Python tools. And I'm going to call these local tools that this can use. Then, and this is where it gets interesting, I have a variety of those MP MCP servers that I showed you. All right. Now what happens is the tool has an MCP client and we're going to focus on that code a little bit. This tool has an MCP client. And um, each of these MCP servers are Docker containers. All right, so for each of the MCP servers that we spin up, it's Docker. But this is STDIO communication. This is not over HTTP. It could be over HTTP, but in my case, these are all STDIO. Okay, and now what happens is, we zoom out a bit. These Docker containers have tools. Okay, so the MCP client here is going to go out and do a discovery. Discover the tools that are available from each of the MCP servers. Then, when the assistant gets a question, comes in, a prompt comes in, the assistant now can reach down into these tools to fulfill the needs to answer the prompt. All right, now those could be tools. Now, just to give you an idea, if I had an MCP server out here that was over HTTP instead of Studio, um, my tool could reach out over the World Wide Web over the cloud and consume the tools. And this here just scales infinitely. We just keep adding more and more and more and more tools. Right? Sounds complicated. It's not. It's the easiest thing you'll ever do. And for me to add another MCP, it's even easier now. Now that I'm doing it dynamically. So let's do a dive into the code. I've been asked about the code. So let's peel the onion and take a look at some of this code. And let's take a look at the video first. So I have a video of this in action that we're going to watch. And, um, and I'm going to annotate the video. So we're in this repo that we're going to look at in a second. And we do dot slash docker startup dot sh. This is a simple bash script that's going to build and start all of the required containers. So the one, two, three, four, five, six containers that we need. So we're going to check, right? It says all containers started. We're going to look in Docker and I have the six containers that I can go into. And you can see they're all running on STDIO. 
there's no ports. If we go back to the screen here a second, see how ports, there's no ports listed because it's not listing on any ports. And then we go down level into the images and we have an image for each of these. So build the image, start the container, that's all you need to do. Then you can start discovering tools and using tools. So we're gonna start my script now, selector plus, and we're gonna look at these logs and then we'll be ready to pause this. So the first thing that we do is print our containers and all the containers are up and you can see their entry points in the command that was used to start them. And then we start looking at the discovery of tools. So just like DHCP with the discovery of an IP address, right, or a, or a networking protocol discovering its neighbor's addresses, I'm going to discover the capabilities of this selector MCP container. And that capability is discovered over a JSON RPC call. It then advertises, I have an ask selector tool. And then we're going to keep moving through the containers. I'm not going to do all of them, but we discover the GitHub tools. And, and GitHub has a tool that is create a file on GitHub. All right, so there's the raw response from the container for GitHub. And you can see a little bit further down here that there is a creator update file tool from GitHub. Google offers things like geolocation and other tools, right? So we have all these tools dynamically added through the MCP client. My local tools are picked up. And then we're going to see all discovered tools and all bound tools. These tools are now bound to my assistant as a node in my graph. All right, now I'm not gonna do any examples of any prompt engineering, but let's take a look at this code. And let me switch to the main branch. Let me just quickly update this git fetch and switch back to main. All right, so let me zoom in and I'll show you how wild this is. So, right, the folders from the containers that I grabbed from GitHub, no changes made or required at all. And then my own selector MCP server as Python. So most of the, the, the MCP servers you get are going to be in TypeScript and JavaScript with a Docker file. Uh, but that's not to say that you can't do it in Python. My local tools, which are all just Python scripts. All right, I have my startup script to bring up the containers, a lang graph to expose this to the lang graph tool, and I don't need this test file anymore, and a selector plus um, folder. Now let me just collapse everything and we'll go through this uh, step by step. Now it's about 500 lines of code, but don't be intimidated by that. These two functions load my um, local tools that's their purpose and then I have this discovery tool now this is coming in from uh, an STDO client from the MCP client and right I'm discovering my tools I'm calling the tools that's what this function is for I've got a load MCP tools that I pass in my different containers and their build properties. So it depends if it's Python or Node, and if it is Node, what the path is. Get the tools for the service, and load all tools. Now in load all tools, like the GitHub MCP, even though it's a protocol, there is some slight differences. Most people land on tools list and tools call, but there is tools discover, or list tools, or call tool. You just have to check the documentation for the MCP server. Um, I'm binding all those tools here. I have my assistant code here. And then the rest of this is just the node graph. Down here I have my CLI to actually ask questions. So it really is simple. And to scale this, right, I just need to bring in the new container and then update some of those um, specifications where I'm loading uh, things. So like one or two lines of code to add a new container and scale this out. So MCP is even better than I thought. Um, 
it works kind of like routing protocols and DHCP all combined. You're going to have a server that companies and applications and different things are going to release. Here's our MCP server. It abstracts away everything, load it into your client, like I have, just scale your client and include the new tool. Your client will discover the tools that the MCP server offers and then start to consume those tools as you need to to respond to prompts. It's really remarkable stuff. So I have a few MCP servers in mind. I'd like to try the file server one and see if I could save files locally through my uh, implementation. And I'm, I'm toying with the idea of email. My problem with email is that they're community driven. It's not an official Gmail, Google Gmail MCP server. Um, but I may play with, uh, try to find an email MCP server. So thank you. Uh, again, no problem being wrong. I've learned a lot. I was doing things of much more difficult, writing my own mapping to the tool instead of just discovering it and using it through the client. All right, thanks again, YouTube comments. You really do help me sometimes. And uh, start building your MCP servers, everyone, and clients.